Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 79 of Women of the Northwest, where I interview ordinary women leading extraordinary lives. If this is your first time here, I'm glad to have you join me today. If you like what you hear, hit the plus sign and follow. Then you'll get new episodes downloaded automatically. There's been a gap in episodes because I've had a hard time getting commitments from guests, but we're back now. If you like watching The Nutcracker, I think you'll enjoy this episode. Our guest today is Jeannie Peterson, owner of Maddox Dance Studio in Warrington, Oregon, who started teaching dance in 1949 in her family's basement at the age of 13. She danced at the Moulin Rouge in Hollywood, in Montreal, and San Francisco, among other places. Listen to her talk about how she started and the ins and outs of the Nutcracker production. I'd like to welcome my guest today, Jeannie Peterson. You started Maddox Dance Studio how many years ago? In 1949. Really? Yes, really. I wasn't even born yet. (laughs) Most people that I know haven't been born yet, yes. 1949. What, What brought you to, inspired you to want to start that? Well, I started dancing when I was nine years old in Roseburg, Oregon. My first teacher was Mildred Jenkins. I remember her very, very well. And she taught in the old armory in in Roseburg. She didn't have a studio building. She was taught in the big armory. And uh, I have vividly memories of the day that Franklin Delano Roosevelt died. Someone walked into the studio to tell her that that had happened. And I remember her just putting her hands over her face and just almost crying right there. And, of course, I was nine. I didn't really know what right. was going on. But then I, she looked up at the, his picture was hanging in the armory. And uh, she said, our president has died. And I, that is, I can still see that happening. So it was just a, a big, strong memory of my first ballet classes, <laughs> learning about that happening. That's I, the same for me for Kennedy. Yes. I was in fifth uh-huh. grade, and I just, uh-huh. when I came over the oh, intercom and the whole, like, uh-huh. yeah, it was, uh-huh. <laughs> I know. You don't forget about something no. like that. It's no, like, from, so we lived in Roseburg. My g- grandfather owned a grocery store, Maddox Grocery Store on, on Main Street. Jackson. Was that his last in, name? In Roseburg, ben? yes. I yes. see. Yes. Okay, because I was ben, wondering ben, where ben, the... Benjamin Maddox, and uh, his, his wife was Elizabeth, Mary Elizabeth, we, we called her. And uh, so... Uh, my dad then took over the store, the grocery store, after he came, well, my, actually, let me backtrack. My grandfather became ill. My dad, Richard Maddox, Dick Maddox, was in radio school in mm. Chicago at that time. He wanted to be a radio announcer. And so he came home. He gave up his career and came home to run the store. So then, the long story short, we, um, there was time when the, a lot of people were charging their groceries Oh, and and mm-hmm. you didn't have credit cards, you didn't have checks, you just charged. <laughs> you just wrote it down on it. And so the business <laughs> was getting with suffering because the charges were mounting up and people were not paying their grocery bill. So then my dad decided he needed to downsize and still he loved the grocery business. He wanted to stay in it. So he bought a little store in Yonkala, mm. which is 30 miles uh, north of Roseburg. Mm-hmm. So we moved to Yonkala and when we got there, I was, I was then about 11 and um, there was no no dancing there at all. No, no one was dancing there at all. So, uh, so it was a long story again, short. Um, my dad then found a store or a restaurant and bar for sale in Astoria, and that was in '49. And um, so he thought, well, that's cash business, you know. So no, get away from the charges. <laughs> so we came to Astoria, and um, so that's how I started dancing then with, with our dancing teaching because there was no teachers in that story at that time. And how old were you then? And I was um, almost uh, 13. You started teaching when you were 13? Mm-hmm. Yes, I did. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, so you must have known enough to be able to teach. Well, I don't know. I don't think I really did. At, at, when I think about what I know now, I thought, well, my gosh, um, I knew first position probably, but not farther from that. But I was just very intent on being a dancer. 
and you were a Lisa it. Polensky. Yes, yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. There it is. So I just loved uh, teaching. So the first teaching I did was in Yonkala, actually, going back. I, I taught baton twirling, mm-hmm. and we were in the 4th of July parade. And then I carried that on when I came to Astoria. There's a, the American Legion had a drum corps. And so I became a majorette with two of my other friends, uh-huh. and we, we led the parades around <laughs> town. That was fun. Does anybody even do baton anymore? Oh, it's big. Yeah, it's just not in our area. Not in our area, though. Especially on the then, East Coast. It's yeah. very big. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And there are some baton twirlers, actually, in Oregon. There's a, an association of some teachers, but it's not mm-hmm. well publicized. Yeah, because when I was in... I was in uh, High school band, marching mm. band, you know, mm. of course, you always had the time for yes, in with that. Yes. And the... Yeah, well, it was very, very big thing at that time. So. Yeah. But, huh. So you did teaching, and then when when did you um, establish this building here? Well, this building, um, well, I first started teaching in my mother's living room, my mother and dad's living room on Harrison Avenue in Astoria. And then... Um, then we moved to an apartment on Grand Avenue, and then I started teaching in the basement mm. of that house. And I taught in the basement until I graduated from high school. Mm. I went to Star of the Sea High School yeah. in a class of 11 seniors. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Loved it, loved it. Took piano lessons there. Uh-huh. Taught 12 years of piano. And uh, so then um, after, um, after graduation, then I moved downtown to above the old uh, first interstate or first national bank, okay. which is now I think it's another bank still right now, but um, on the corner of 12, 11th, I think, 11th, 12th Street. Mm. But um, then um, after that, then I decided I wanted to study more. I had been studying in Portland with Maria Dare, wonderful, wonderful oh. teacher, wonderful teacher. And I'd been going uh, to, on the Greyhound bus to Portland. My mother would put me on the bus to Portland, and I would go take my ballet lesson and by, yourself. Come, by myself. Mm-hmm. <laughs> then I would come home. She sent me to Los Angeles that way too, to go so I could go to a dance convention. <laughs> when I was sixteen, I went by myself to Los Angeles. Oh my gosh! So, but uh, <laughs> lots of Greyhound bus rides. But um, then we started teaching in or the place downtown in the First National Bank. And then I wanted to try out to be, I wanted to be a professional dancer, do a, a musicals or so forth. So I went back to Los Angeles, and my teacher at the time, Catherine Etienne, um, was um, encouraging me to audition. But she said, there's one thing about it, so you're short. And so mm. you may not have lots of jobs available to you. Because definitely in a musical or whatever, right. you have to be a certain height. Like the Rockettes have to right. be a certain height. So um, I went to Los Angeles and I auditioned for a musical version of Our Town with Rosalind oh, really? Russell. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and so it was at the Greek Theater, a beautiful outdoor theater in Los mm-hmm. Angeles. And so we all went down into the basement of the Greek Theater to get ready. There was like 300, 400 girls. So I don't remember, but it was a huge amount of girls. So we all ready. I went up on the stage, and the very first thing they said. Anyone under 5'5", five five, we're sorry, we cannot use you. <laughs> so I looked at myself, and I thought, I'm 5'2", there's no way I could get this job. And with along of a, a lot of other girls, we all went back to the basement. And, uh, I <laughs> and shared with, tears. <laughs> I know, called my mother, who was in Astoria, and called her and said, Mom, I just want to come home. She said, no, you're not coming home. Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> so she said, you're going to stay there and try again. So anyway, then I did um, try again, and uh, that is when I... Got a job at the Moulin Rouge in Hollywood. Really? And one of the Don Arden dancers. Huh. And um, so I followed that along for several years and then ended up t- dancing in Montreal and different places, San Francisco for a long time. And, so you gained uh, all those skills so, to be able to know so how more that, things to be able to teach. Yes, right. So then I came home and, um, and went back to the studio, and I've been there ever since. Oh, my so. word. Wow. Just that and alone, just mm-hmm. those experiences are so rich. <laughs> I know. Your parents must have been something. When, well, they were wonderful, supportive. My mother and dad both were very supportive. One, they believed in you. Whatever I wanted to do. And they gave mm. you the experiences. They did. And with, with lots of love along with it. it was yeah. It wonderful. Yeah. Very secure. So when you started 
teaching here, what did you teach? Ballet? Ballet. And just ballet, ballet and tap. No, I started with ballet only in the basement mm-hmm. and on Grand Avenue. And then, um, then I enlarged that uh, to tap and jazz and Hawaiian oh. and, uh, yes, and modern, contemporary. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yes. And then um, boys and girls, right? Oh, yes. Uh, just always. Whoever came. Yes, always. <laughs> yes. We've had some wonderfully talented boys. Yeah. So one right now is still dancing professionally. He's um, at the Missouri Contemporary Theater, and uh, he's from Seaside, and just a great uh, Joel Hathaway. Oh, my. He's a very talented boy. Yeah. He graduated from Cornish uh, Music School in Seattle, and our School of the Arts. And then started his career. And, he's and he got his inspiration doing here. really well. <laughs> We've had quite a few dancers become professionals. Yeah. Elizabeth Minor from Warrington was with an American Ballet Theater. And uh, we had one girl from Seaside who ended up on the, the London cast of uh, Sunset Boulevard. Really? So, yeah. Oh, my really, God. Really, really great kids. That is so neat. So when did you first do your do Nutcracker? Um, it was, well, it was uh, 48 years ago, so that was in the, whatever that is, I don't remember, <laughs> one year just kind of goes up, but this this it was our 48th be. annual, so 80-something, yeah, yeah, yeah. So. And what was that like for the first time? The very first one was very interesting. It was a 20-minute version. <laughs> <laughs> Left out a lot of scenes. Yes, yes, with a long play record player sitting on a little chair that no one dared get near to bump it. <laughs> bumped it. It's and uh-huh, <laughs> yes. So that was at the Riviera Theater. They want they call me that? it's the um on the corner now of um uh, 11th High Street on Marine Drive. It's a, it's a theater now. But it is a Columbia, Did it used to be Colombian in the... Colombia. Oh, theater. the Columbian. Oh, yes. It oh, used to be oh, the Riviera. Oh. Oh, mm-hmm. it, was, it was a vaudeville house. They're in the, down in the basement. I don't know if it's sense. still there, uh, but there were names of stars that had come to Astoria to perform, huh. and names on the walls that they had written. Just really cool, really cool. So you did your first one there with your little record player. Yes. How yes. many um, and that was dancers the, were there? Um, probably twelve, I would yeah. say. Uh, we we had one little Cl- Clara who didn't dance. She sat in a little rocking chair and read a book about the Nutcracker. And that was <laughs> that was how we narrated it. But um, uh, that was they invited us to do it there because they wanted something to entertain the children uh-huh. that came. Before the movies, before the free Saturday oh. movies. Oh. So we were the prologue to the free Saturday movies. Kind of like they do with concerts. Yes, the other, yes, the, yeah. the opener. Yeah. The, yeah. And then, so probably that first time, your mind is starting to go, oh, we could do this, we could do that. Well, this. it just kept growing. <laughs> yeah. You know, it just kept growing. So then we went to doing galas, and uh, we invited dancers from all over the country to come in and be the guest artists, mm-hmm. which we still do. Right. But, but at that time, we were doing excerpts of the Nutcracker. It was growing. Mm-hmm. And then the DS artists would come in and perform. I have uh, I have some posters that I can show you. Oh, yeah. With who fun. came. Yeah. Yeah. And a couple of our dancers that became professionals came back and were our guest artists, too. Which they loved. Cassandra Green, um, Gruner now, as her name. She is just retired from Oregon Ballet Theater as their um, ballet mistress. Wow. So, yeah, she's done beautifully. Yeah, wonderful. She was a little tiny girl. Her dad was worked for the forestry department, and they lived in Astoria for a short time. Then he was transferred, and they moved to Portland. But we've had some great kids. And something like the Nutcracker, I mean, because it's just so, well, seasonal, and it becomes mm-hmm. just, that's mm-hmm. what we do. Every mm-hmm. year we go to the Nutcracker, yeah. because that just becomes the... And, you know, you know, it changes from year to year, depending upon how what our auditions are like mm-hmm. because we the, our teachers who are all my former students who I'm so proud of that they change the choreography according to who gets the parts okay so you'll see lots of different things going on the same music same story uh-huh. but the steps to the choreography are all different applying to the choreography or the skills of the dancers how many dancers did you have 75 75 mm-hmm. And managing that alone. Well, I have lots of help. I mean, this is not a one-woman show, that's for sure. It couldn't be. No, I have lots of help. Wonderful people that help me. I have 
countless people, wonderful volunteers. Walk us through what the steps are to do a performance. So to get to the end game, you've got a lot of things going on. I did theater for a while, so yes, I know. Yes, yes, exactly. Theater, but, so you've got your sets. You've oh, yes. You've got your sound. Yes. You've got lights. You have right. somebody managing the crowd and tickets right. and yes. all that kind of stuff. But the dressing room. <laughs> the whole dressing room. I know, because I always say this. I've said this for years, and I announce this to the kids before we even start, because they need to know who is in charge in that dressing room. And I'll tell them that the dressing room is what counts at all, at for all things. If I have no organization in the dressing room, I'll have nothing on stage. Right. It's all up to those. Who's coming in, when, yeah. and mm-hmm. what time, and mm-hmm. cue, and all of that. So it's all right there in that dressing room. It's a very important place. Yeah. It's all organized. Yeah, your backstage so. people and exactly. all of that. Exactly. How long does it take to practice, I mean, from beginning to your we event? Start, uh, we start nine weeks ahead. That's all? Mm-hmm. That's it. And it's every Saturday. When they, when they audition, they know that they have to be here that commitment. every Saturday. And we do several things during the week, but not that many. Uh-huh. We only do the Waltz of the Flowers, um, usually, and uh, the snow scene uh, practice during the week. And then sometimes we bring in things that might need more work from Saturday. But it's basically 9 to 4 on Saturday. So it's a full with no full excuses. Commitment. Yeah, they've got to be there. <laughs> you got to be there. You're out. Yeah, yeah. Yep. because you couldn't. You know what? Um, and I imagine sometimes you have somebody that gets sick and can't be well, there. And, and then you, got... you just have to work with that. You yeah, know, we don't take them out. You know, we just work around and pray that they'll get well <laughs> fast. <Yeah. laughs> fast, and not everybody yeah, else. Because you don't want to penalize them for getting sick. So right, yeah. right. And you have all ages in there, so you've got. They have kids to be clear. seven. They need to be they seven. They have to be seven, yeah, in order to handle the, you know, the long rehearsals and the just the behavior, you know, the focus and listening and not running around. We don't allow any running around, you know, it's just got to be everybody on their... <laughs> the energy goes into the dance. They're best, <laughs> and they're quiet. They can't be talking. They have to be quiet, so... Yeah. I'll, well, sometimes in the morning when we start at 9 o'clock, I'll say, and there's rehearsals, two hours, I'll say, it's okay, it's 9 o'clock. You may not speak until 11 a.m., so. <laughs> that's a so, lot of self-control uh-huh. yeah they do they, they do it they do it yeah because they want to be and then you have your your repeat kids that are year after year uh-huh. so they're moving into another position yes or another yes they, they do yeah um, and so they know the storyline they, they know, know the what story to expect right and, and then they help the younger ones too lots of times you'll see that yeah which is wonderful yeah. They really are a close knit group. I'm, I'm sure that There's, over the years they yeah, probably they're become... all really. It's we say family, and it uh-huh. really is a family. Yeah, yeah, it is. And the parents as well. Oh, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Yes. Stepping right in because we know the girls can't drive themselves. The, the parents <laughs> have got to be there, doing all the things that they do. Right. And, and they're wonderful. And love it. And they never complain. They're just always there. Yeah. Just having that many kids involved just boosts all of your audience as well mm-hmm. because they're all oh, yes. going to see somebody. And then, yes, it yeah. is. It is. Yeah. What's it cost to put on a production like that? Oh, well, I'm not really, I, I don't really pay attention. The, the finance people do. But I would say maybe $25,000 mm-hmm. as a rough estimate. Yeah. Because it, you've got costumes, you've got mm-hmm. your well, we sets. Have, we have orchestra. And the orchestra, which yes. was amazing. Aren't they wonderful? That was so amazing. They are so good. And a lot of them come from out of town, too. Uh, there's about 15 of them that come from out of other other symphony orchestras. Yeah. So And they love coming. They love, And the hotels and motels give us rooms for them. Oh, that is a huge, 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 huge. Because we cannot afford to pay no. for them yeah. to be in a hotel. So they give them two nights free. Wow. And it's amazing. That is amazing. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We could, we could never do that. Yeah. Well, it's probably better, too, in the winter. They probably have more availability to be able to Well, but at the same time, them. you know, at the same time, they're, they're having to clean up the room. And, you know, the whole thing is just like, like if they were being paid. Right. They treat them so well. They eat their breakfasts and, you know, have yeah. their, their complimentary meal <laughs> little treats. And, yeah, it's very important. Yeah. So. In my mind, there's going. Yeah, somebody had to organize those places. Mm-hmm. And those people well, our conductor, our place. conductor, Corey Peterson. Corey Peterson. Is he amazing. is. Yeah, he is. The he evaluates all of it and and organizes all of it for us. So, 
<laughs> and all the other things he's doing. I just joined the Columbia River Symphony. Oh, so yeah. So I'll be in that concert on Saturday night Wonder. with him. But oh, he wonderful. is amazing. Oh, he is. He's so talented. And then he's the superintendent of schools on top of it. I don't know how he does it. <laughs> I don't know how he does it all either. He is totally, totally amazing. What are some of the obstacles that you face when you're doing a production? Well, uh, the first thing that comes to my mind would be weather. <laughs> I know one year we were rained out of our third performance. Ugh. And this the high school stage started leaking. It was like walking into a rainforest and on Sunday morning. And I went, my husband and I had just gone to have breakfast, and we got a phone call. And they said, the school is leaking. And I said, oh, it can't be leaking. So I went there, and I could not, I was sick. I could not believe it. Our things did not get wet. Fortunately, none of it was wet. But we had to move it quickly out of the dressing room because that was leaking badly. And so the dressing room things we put all backstage behind the main stage. And then we honored the tickets for that performance in Seaside. We had to do the third performance at Seaside because the high school wasn't fixed yet. And we lost the orchestra because they, they could not come back. So we did it with... Uh, video or with uh, records right. or CDs. Yeah. And um, so we did it in January, January 16th, mm -hmm. I think it was that year. And um, everybody came. We honored all the tickets and it was, and more people came. So it was wonderful. Cheering you on. Oh, gosh. Yeah. <laughs> we can get through. Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that would be. Uh, so weather is a big, big. And then the other thing was, and this is aside from the, uh, um, one year the, uh, Astoria High School football team was was running or in the championships on a Saturday night, and we thought, oh my gosh, a lot of people said bought bought tickets, right. so we honored them on the next day. Oh, yeah, so that was good. Yeah, but, but adjust think, and adjust. <laughs> yeah, but I think that's one of the things is um, just keeping people healthy. You know, during COVID, we did not get to do our show that year, but keeping people healthy and um, just praying everybody can can be there with less, mm -hmm. you know, no wrecks or whatever on the way over. Right. Just a lot of things that come yeah. into flying in. Guest artists, sometimes we fly them in because they're coming from a long distance. Right. And, uh, and if there's snow somewhere, they and may not snow, get through. Yeah. And they... <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. There's just lots of things that we worry about yeah. that you just never know. Yeah. So. Have you ever had a uh, dancer be injured on the stage? N not during a performance. Not during no, not during a performance. We've had little injuries here and there during practices, mm -hmm. but usually nothing severe. This year we did have two that were injured both in rehearsal, mm -hmm. and so they um, they could not perform. Yeah. But they were there helping in the dressing room. Of course. Yeah. They, they were right there with us the whole time. Yeah. So, so do you do any other kind of performances that are equal to that? The well, not that or the no, not it? equal to Nutcracker, but I would, but big in its own way. Um, we do the recital every year, mm -hmm. and we do other shows. We do a young choreographer show at the Liberty Theater mm -hmm. every spring, so the the children make up their own dances and oh. are they're adjudicated by a panel of, of out of town judges Neat. that come in and evaluate them on them, and then they perform them yeah. at the theater. Um, we do a tap dance festival every year. Uh, okay. which now we've, we're combining with the young choreographers. Uh -huh. And um, then we do a, a show every year for the U.S. Navy and the Coast Guard. Oh. The, the ship's going upriver. They're going to the Rose Festival, and they invite us every year to do that. Oh, well, that's fun. So We used to do the county fair. We, we still miss doing the county fair. It was really fun. Yeah. But, um, but we've enjoyed doing these other side things. And mm -hmm. Whenever someone needs an entertainment, we just say, you know, let us know. Yeah. So. Yeah. Oh, it just sounds like so fulfilling. I mean. Well, performing is you know, such a, you learn so many things from performing. Yeah. So they yeah. learn, you know, how you to organize. Teamwork and you're, yes. Yeah. That teamwork and the organization of, you know, getting them there and, and just under new circumstances, different floors. The floors are, we have our own floor for the Nutcracker. It's big oh. rolls. Oh, really? 40 feet long, five, six feet wide. And uh, we have that. It's a. It, it's an injury prevention type yeah. of thing. So, because this floor is this wood floor over cement, so we have these special floors that we oh. use. Mm -hmm. Interesting, so, yeah. huh? Yeah, people don't realize that we have to bring that along with us. 
But, well, these floors in here are uh, portable floors, too. Well, how about that? So. And then you have to have a place to store things, all your yes, sets. Yes, a wonderful storage place over here in Warrington. <laughs> we, we love them. They're very good. They, we have two, uh, two big storage units for yeah. costumes and for sets. Yeah. So everything goes back over there right after the show is over. The trucks are, arrive at the back door of the school, and, and, ready to... and the crew puts it on. So within two hours of the thing being over, we're already You're back done. to storage. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and you yeah. probably have that fine-tuned. <laughs> well, it's it's very orchestrated because yeah. you just have to have certain things in certain places so you can find it next year. And my my new um, chairman of the, of the uh, wardrobe, they have it all mapped out so well. That they'll never lose another thing. Yeah. They'll know exactly where everything is. Are you a list maker? Very much so. <laughs> but to the point where I forget where the lists are. So that's not good. So I have double lists. So you have an assistant that takes your list and <laughs> no, just my, give me the list. My assistants all. can't even read my list, so <laughs> so they don't want to even see them, but <laughs> oh. that's right on everything. Napkins, <laughs> envelopes, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in the car. I'm always writing down uh-huh. something, you know. Uh-huh. So I'm driving like, okay. <laughs> well, and then I forget what I was going to write down. So <laughs> <laughs> I understand. Oh God, totally understand. So, do you think what you're doing now is kind of what you're just going to continue to do, or do you have a vision for anything else? Well, I think we're going to continue doing what we're doing, and if some opportunity comes up to do something else, we will do it. Mm-hmm. So we're just ready for anything that happens. We're we're interested in, in still. I still want to do a more of a community-based um, class, and um, so we're just kind of working on that idea still. Mm-hmm. And are you mentoring someone to take your place eventually? Or well, my, you sound like my daughters. Um, my my three daughters always say, "Mother, who's going to take over when you aren't there?" <laughs> but I have wonderful, wonderful ladies right now that have, have been my students. They've been around. They know all the inside things and they would certainly be able to do that yeah so yeah and i would just sit by and and, and love it <laughs> <laughs> and just enjoy them because mm-hmm. they have been with you so long yeah, they have been could just they have been and, and it would make your heart feel good wouldn't it well it, it makes yeah. my heart feel good right now because i know i could trust them to take over yeah so yeah well anything else you'd like to share well um I just, I've just been renewing some more friendships back from, I used to produce the Miss Oregon pageant for 33 years. Mm. And um, so I've had just some nice com- conversations with some of my former contestants and people that I've known through that. And yeah. uh, so I've been enjoying that part of it too. Yeah, for sure. Well, thank you, Jeannie. This has been really interesting. Well, thank you very <laughs> much. It's been a pleasure to see you. Yeah. Thanks again for listening. I hope you enjoyed this show. If this is your first time here, take a look through the other 78 episodes and see who or what topic interests you. Transcripts are available on my website at jan-johnson.com. And as you prepare for the holidays, I hope you're blessed.